there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. <laughs> Welcome to a very special Christmas edition of The Dog Rescuers. See you in a bit, boys. I'm in southwest London at one of the country's busiest animal hospitals to see for myself how the wonderful staff here are keeping our four-legged friends fit and healthy during the festive period. We're about to meet some of the poorly pooches currently at the hospital and hopefully help some of them get back on their feet and home in time for Christmas. Trapped in where? Trapped Some ice? Yes, it's ice. And we'll be travelling across the country to see inspectors carrying out daring rescues. Do we know what's the dog called? Harvey. Yeah. <gasps> She'll grab you beautiful. Come on then. Oh, that smell. Come on, girl. And meeting dogs in need of a Christmas miracle. Good girl. Well, I haven't seen anything like this in nine years. Months and months and months and years of neglect. And I've got the fantastic job of playing surprise Santa for some of the bravest, kindest, and most deserving dogs and their owners we've been lucky enough to meet. Got some stuff for the dog and then some stuff for you as well. Some treats. And one of them. Oh, make your teeth nice, that will. He's my soulmate. It's never ending, it's eternal. Christmas may be a magical time of year, but for the people keeping our dogs safe from harm, it can be a very challenging season too. Around the country, as temperatures dip, the freezing conditions create new dangers which can test even the most prepared of dog rescuers. In Ashington, Northumberland, Inspector Jackie Miller received an alarming call. Hello. Hello, Jackie. It's Michaela coming in in relation to an emergency rescue of a dog trapped in some ice. Trapped in where? Some ice. Yes, it's ice. Fire and rescue are on row and they're requesting our assistance. Right, okay. I'm coming. Thank Jeez, you, Jackie. Bye. had really, really bad weather up here. At some point, it, it got to minus six, um, although things appear to have thawed out today. I've never been called out to a dog on some ice, ever. I've been called to a swan in some ice. I've got no other swift water team on today either, which means it will be me and the fire brigade. It needs to be dealt with ASAP. If we get an emergency call from the police or the fire brigade, I want to be there as fast as I can. You know, you've got to be thinking, how bad is the animal? Is it really an emergency situation? Am I not going to need any of my colleagues to come and help me? You never know what exactly it's going to be until you get there. 99.9% of the time, a different situation to what you've done previously. As she approaches, Jackie spots fire and rescue already on the scene. Oh, they're down there. There's people right on the bank. Good job I've got my thermal on. As soon as Jackie spots the dog, her worst fears are confirmed. What's the dog called? Harvey. Poor Hardy is neck deep in freezing water and trapped in the fragile ice. Hardy was out with his dog walker, Pat, when he strayed onto the ice. All she can do is watch nervously and hope she doesn't have to give his owner bad news. He normally goes to go swim in the river and he just went down and I didn't see it, but he must have gone through the ice or it went off the edge and he hasn't been able to get back out again. And it's been about an hour now, I would think, that he's been in. Submerged in the ice-cold water for an hour, Hardy's body temperature is at risk of dropping dangerously low. If it continues to fall, the stranded Labrador could develop hypothermia, which can be fatal. As the animal expert, it's Jackie's responsibility to rescue the desperate dog. With no time to waste, she gets kitted up. When you get on the ice, um, don't walk on it, and you just spread out in a big starfish. There's a lot to think about when you've got a dog stuck in icy cold water. 
No twists? Yeah, you're fine. The cold is going to have an effect. It could cause hypothermia, just as it could with us as well, if we were stuck in the water for a period of time. Can I just have a look first? Good boy, Harvey. Good boy, Sana. And it's not just Hardy whose life might be in danger. You just got to make sure that you can protect yourself before you go into and put yourself into a dangerous situation. What's the situation? What you're thinking? Is your team leader happy for me to do this on my own? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you want me to starfish. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, constantly keep you tethered, and we've got your downstream back up. Put this out in front of you as far as you can reach. Yeah. Let the spike go into the ice, and then you just pull yourself along, and you'll squish towards the dog. OK. At this stage in time, if you kind of get the dog out, yeah. just stabilise the situation by hanging on to the dog. Inch by inch, Jackie edges out onto the thin layer of ice. In Northumberland, Hardy the Labrador has been submerged in freezing waters for over an hour. Good boy, Harvey. Inspector Jackie Miller is desperately trying to reach him before he's overcome by the cold or loses his grip. But this is an extremely dangerous situation for her too. If you lie on your stomach, That's it, and then just pull towards you. That's it. When you get closer to the dog, obviously it's going to be a, a bit more fragile. So just take it easy. I think as an inspector, <laughs> you do a lot of things a lot of people wouldn't do. You put yourselves in a lot of situations. Some nerves are good, but you just need to keep a handle of them. Think clearly. Um, think through what you need to do and what the end result needs to be. Good boy, Harvey! Good boy! Every inch Jackie takes towards Hardy, the ice gets thinner and the risk of falling through gets greater. Good boy! Whoever's at the top, can you get blankets and stuff out my phone, please? Yeah, we will do. Yeah. Good boy, Harvey! Just as Hardy is within reach, the ice breaks and Hardy starts to panic. Come on, keep going. Oh, oh. Keep going. With Hardy exhausted, it's up to Jackie to get him out and stop him from slipping under the ice. Pull him back in. Yeah. Right, let her float in the water. Come on, Hardy. Come on. There you go, she's nearly got it there, excellent. Come on, good boy, good boy! Sorry. After spending over an hour in the freezing water, Hardy is finally out. And judging by that wagging tail, I'd say he's pretty happy about it. And so is dog walker Pat. Fantastic, I'll put it in words. From getting here to getting him out was about 10 minutes, maybe. To just go out on the ice like that, very brave, very brave. Tremendous. Couldn't agree more, and despite her icy dip, Jackie's mind is still on the dog she's rescued. Oh. Hello, Sonna. I, I dropped your lead in the water. I'm sorry. Oh, you silly boy. Let's have a look, because you had a cut on your foot. Yeah. Let's have a look. She's got tiny little tiny You silly Billy. You don't go for a bully. Oh. Thanks, everybody. It's all right. I'm all along the go and just try and get him home and warmed up. Just make sure he's all right, all right? If you've got any concerns about him later, you could just get him a vet yeah. check just to check that there's no problems with the, yeah. the body Thank temperature, you so much. all right? Thank you. Good lad. Good lad. Obviously, he, he must be a dog that goes swimming in the river, usually when he goes on his dog walk. I'm not quite sure he's going to be doing that too often, or he might be having a different walking route. All right, so I know you're cold, I know. Have some sausage. Called Hardy, not Harvey, but I don't think he really cared as long as I was coming for him. There you are, sweetie. There you are. He's a good lad. 
Hardy by name, hardy by nature. If he'd been in there a lot longer, it could have got to the point where his body temperature had reduced dramatically. Not being able to get onto the side, he would have got exhausted. It could have been an, an, a nasty ending. But he, he thankfully held on for that hour. What a hair-raising rescue. Nice work, Jackie. But Hardy will need to get home and warmed up quickly to make sure he doesn't suffer any lasting damage from his freezing ordeal. We'll catch up with him later. Whilst many of us wind down as the new year approaches, for the staff at Putney Animal Hospital, the festive period can be a busy season when it comes to treating our sick and injured hounds. Today, I've been given the chance to join vet Michael Lazarus on his rounds to experience a day in his life in the run-up to Christmas. Just this way. First up, we're meeting a few of the four-legged patients. Who have we got in today? Uh, a few things. Super um, colours. Yes, uh, they all seem to be wearing cones. This guy over here, Dexter, he has just been castrated, um, so he is a bit groggy. Um, yeah. So I think we'll just uh, let him have some, have some yes. quiet time and uh, <laughs> rest up. Got a lot to think about. Yeah. This is Trigger. He actually came to us um, a few months ago with a fractured leg. One of our vets, Laura, she put a plate across the fracture, but he's been really naughty and he always somehow manages to get his bandage off, which is why we've got this cone on. And uh, yeah, he's healing well. Good for you, Trigger. Yeah. These two are well on the way to recovery. But some dogs here still have a way to go. This lovely girl over here, this is Bo. She's had quite a lot of trouble urinating and she's had some blood in the urine as well. So what we're going to do today is do some imaging of her bladder and see what the problem could be. Now, Dalmatians actually have a very characteristic problem whereby they form special stones in their bladder, and that's a genetic disorder that's been passed down generation to generation. But if she does have any big stones in her, then we might need to remove those surgically. Could just be maybe a simple cystitis, but you never know, it could be something more sinister, so we really have to try and get a diagnosis on this before we can rehome her. But hopefully she'll leave today with a good prognosis. Michael's hopeful that the stones can be spotted with a simple ultrasound, so we're going to scan Bo's bladder. I just need some gel. <laughs> Okay, so I basically stuck the probe on her abdomen, just in the back there. And what you can see, if I just get a good view, that big black space there, that's her bladder. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's big, big, big. She's got a lot of urine in there. Uh -oh. And then I go down to the neck of the bladder over there. How can you tell it's full of urine? So basically, any um, liquid on ultrasound comes up as black. Right. What I'm doing as I move along is I'm looking for any shadows in the ultrasound scan or any stones that I can see. And if you can see, sometimes when I move that along, there's a bit of white shadowing oh, okay. in the middle of the black bit. So we don't know what that is. That shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be there. It could be a stone, or it could be something more ominous. The certain type of stone that we're looking at, they don't always come up that easily. Uh -huh. um, so that's why whenever you're unsure, you should try and do a contrast x-ray. Is if she's got just a normal cystitis, it could be a bit of a blood clot. So hopefully it's just something simple like that. But because she is a bit of an older girl, we want to rule out other things. Obviously, we have to think of types of bladder cancer as well. Um, so we want to make sure that she definitely doesn't have something like that before we rehome her. So, next step, X-ray for Bo. Yeah. Let's just hope it's good news for Bo, and she's not heading for a distinctly unmerry Christmas.
Across the series, we've met a lot of incredible dogs and inspiring owners who don't often get the thanks they deserve Darling. for the work they do and the joy and comfort they've brought. So, as it's Christmas, I'm going to spread a little bit of festive cheer and play Santa Claus. Or should that be Santa Paws? I've hitched a ride with animal collection officer and head elf, Joe White, who's going to help with some present delivery. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey! Oh, what fun is to ride on a wild serpent's leg. Hey! We're jingling all the way to see an inspector who really embodies the spirit of Christmas. Every winter, Charlotte Melvin hits the streets around the country to hand out some essential goodies to the homeless and their canine companions. They've got some stuff for the dog and then some stuff for you as well. Christmas is This time of year is really hard for anybody who's sleeping rough. It's absolutely freezing. What's she called? Izzy. How long have you had her for? Uh, I've had her three and a half years. I rescued her when she was six months old. Oh, you've had her a long time then? Yeah. This is the third year we've been running the project for now. So we've probably given out 700 bags over the last two years. What do you, th what do you think? Else? We've got some food, so like some tins of food and stuff, some treats, and one of them. Oh, make your teeth nice, like, well. And then there's some socks and a nice a scarf and things to keep you nice and warm. OK. There's a warm blanket in the bottom, so you've got something you can wrap her up in as oh, well. Oh, that's great. She's my best friend. She, she, she's every, everything to me, everything. For me, it's companionship. It's, it's unconditional love. Yeah. They don't judge you as a person, do they? No, they, just, no. they just love you for who you are, don't no, they? No, no matter what. People are really, really grateful. They're really happy that we can make their day a little bit better and their dog's day a little bit better. What Charlotte's doing, giving like, stuff out for the dogs, is amazing. It's lovely. It's really nice. See Thank you later. You. Bye. Take care. Lovely to Thank meet you. you. I'm meeting Charlotte at RSPCA Millbrook to help with a bit of Christmas stuffing and deliver a cracker of a surprise. With Christmas just around the corner, Charlotte's determined to reach as many rough sleepers and their dogs as possible. Hi, hey Charlotte. Merry Christmas. Hi. Merry Christmas. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right, thank you. She's already busy packing her next lot of goodie bags to hand out. So what you do is just fantastic. What made you want to do it? Um, I think more than anything, it's when you go to places and you see the extent of how many people there is actually on the streets now. There's so many people, and a lot of them people have got dogs. That dog is that person's life. And to just go and help out and make somebody smile, I think, um, go and do a little bit of good in the yeah. world. And, you know, people watching at home now, is there any way they could get involved or, you know, help out too? Yes, definitely. Always after donations, um, as you can probably imagine, giving out that many bags. We need a lot of things. Funny you should say that, Charlotte. Joe, my trusty Christmas elf, awaits. Come with me. So I know that you need lots and lots of donations, so we took it upon ourselves to ask loads of businesses and people, anyone who had stuff that would be useful to you, and this is what we were given. Oh my God, wow, that's amazing. Is that all for us? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? God, there's so much stuff there. So much stuff. Inundated. Sacks of dry food, wet food, there's toys, treats. And if you think that's a lot, let's have a look around the side. Oh my God, there's even more. Yeah. <laughs> God, there's absolutely loads. It's going to make so many dogs happy this Christmas, so thank you so much. No, thank you. you oh, thank you. Too. Whilst we're all winding down for Christmas, sadly dogs like Trigger here are still being abandoned and neglected and left in need of help. In the cold winter months running up to Christmas, a warm fur coat can be a dog's best friend. 
but for long-haired breeds, a lack of grooming can turn their fur into a disabling shackle. On the Wirral, a severely matted Shih Tzu has been signed over to Inspector Anthony Joins after a call from a concerned member of the public. Hey, Molly. Hey, girl. I haven't seen anything like this in nine years. And the back, I just, I just think, look at that. Months and months and months and years of neglect. Such a severe case of matting is a heartbreaking situation for Anthony and potentially life-threatening for Molly here. Come on, girl. Anthony just has to hope that he's got to her in time. Coming up. Just these mats are so tight on her leg. Yeah, I know. Will Molly's coat be too much to handle? I'm just worry what state the dog's in underneath. And I'll find out if Bo the Dalmatian is going to have a happy and healthy Christmas. There's slightly in increasing tension with each x ray. Yep. Oh, good girl. On the Wirral, Anthony Joins has a serious case on his hands, a Shih Tzu called Molly with the worst matted coat he has ever seen. Hello. Hi. Thanks for seeing us. Vet Holly Jones is on duty to assess the little dog. This is Molly. At the moment, she can barely open her mouth. These mats on the face are so tight, going from up by her eye to under her yeah. chin. With such extreme matting, it's a struggle to see where the dog ends and her tangled coat begins. This so. is all what? Yeah. It's disgusting. People shouldn't take on a dog and like us. this if they're not going to keep it up. When dogs are severely matted, it's very frustrating because that's something that's so easily prevented just by regular grooming. I'm trying, I'm trying to stroke it, but I wanted to actually feel it. As a result of her unkempt coat, Poor Molly can barely walk. Come on then. She's yeah, she's not really putting weight through that leg. She can't move at all. Deeply concerned, Holly takes a closer look at the feet. Just these mats are so tight on her leg. Yeah, I know. And discovers something even more disturbing. Oh man. So, looking at this front leg, it's the only foot you can actually see. It's, it's... Is that the pad? Yeah, that is the main pad, which is pointing to you at the moment. It should be around here somewhere. It's completely deformed. We need to, we need to get the mats off first yeah. so we can see what's going on underneath. I think the only fair way to do that is to sedate her. Yeah. Shih Tzus are meant to be brushed every few days. As Molly potentially hasn't had her coat groomed in five years, it's not going to be an easy task. Vet nurses Joe and Sandra are called in to help. She's a good girl. Here we go, this first piece. But the paws are so twisted from the fur, it's impossible to tell what's mat and what's dog. There's a claw there, there's a claw there, there's a pad there, so I don't know what's in that. I don't want to cut that. No. What's it there? Molly's fur is so dense, it's even a match for the clippers. He's a bit. I've got a hedge trimmer. Clobbering three blades with little sign of progress. I don't think it's going to work. The clippers are good enough, do you know what I mean? The difficulty with matted dogs when they're so severe is not knowing what's underneath. Skin problems, deformities limbs dying and potentially dropping off. You have to be very careful that you don't then cut the skin inadvertently and cause more damage. Things are so bad, if Holly and the team can't get through the matted mane without making things worse, they may have to consider putting her to sleep. We get this off, this is when they're in the middle Holly has one last trick up her sleeve to try and cut through the knotted fur. If you can get through with the scissors first, isn't it? You feel the other side. Incredible. I'm just worry what state the dog's in underneath. Mm -hmm. Of 
after an hour of shaving and cutting, Holly and Anthony are only just discovering how skin-crawling Molly's problems have become. Oh, please. Oh. Yeah. That is a nail. Quite dead, the nail. It's all black and it's got any blood supply along it. Just can't imagine what it's like for this part, poor dog walking around with these giant flippers. After years of walking on clumps of fur rather than her paws, Molly's nails haven't been worn down and have grown out of control. Three nails there, and then last nail is a monster. That is a foot. And finally, foot number three and four. I mean, the nails alone just show how neglected the dog has been. It's been a long afternoon, and with the dematting almost complete, Anthony has to get back to inspector duty. But little Molly is not out of the woods just yet. I'm worried that basically it's been going on that long, the legs are potentially really badly affected. Is the dog even going to be able to walk? It's going to be probably a sleepless night for me. These bags will probably look worse tomorrow. But I think we've just, we're doing our absolute best, and I think that's all you can do. with Animal Collection Officer Joe White. We've already had the pleasure of spreading Christmas cheer to one deserving cause, and we're not finished yet. Christmas Day, let's go and run through it with your family growing up, what would it be like? Get up, have to have breakfast before you're out in with the presents. You absolutely you can't get any of the presents. I'm, with, I'm all over that. Always sitting around waiting for my dad. We're all sitting ready, ready and waiting to go, and he's like just making his tea and pouring out his cornflakes. I think he did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I think he does. Does he still do it, that, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, if Dad, I, I... hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> We're on our way to visit a young man and his dog, who touched all our hearts when we first met them three years ago. Hatchie was found at Spitfield's railway yard. He was hit by a train, which shattered his rear left hock and um, pretty much you know, severed his tail. I think they were very, very surprised that he actually made it 48 hours. Um, from our understanding that the wounds and the injuries were that severe. As a result of his injuries, Hatchie lost his tail and also a back leg. But after such awful suffering, he did gain a new life when he was rescued by Owen Hopkins and family. Hatchie! I'm Owen Hawkins, nine year old. I have short shell pearl syndrome, one of the rare, it's a rare condition, and there's about, we know about 30 or 40 in the world who has it. Schwartz Jampal syndrome is a genetic disorder which means Owen's muscles can never relax. The condition badly affected his confidence. Owen would, he always liked to wear a cap. So which he'd then pull down over his face or his hood would be right up over his head, just to try and avoid eye contact with people. But after Owen met Hatchie, everyone noticed an immediate difference in them both, including stepmum Colleen. Will was holding Owen up because he couldn't sit upright on his own. And Hatchie went from being a boisterous big lump of a puppy to suddenly being very quiet and still and calm. My dad brought a hatch into my room and he put his head on my lap. And I went, have a hatch, have a hatchy. I loved him straight away from the beginning. Come on, let's go for Owen and Hatchy's relationship has gone from strength to strength. Good boy. Hatchy will always be my best friend. Hatchie is the bestest friend I've actually got. Ever. Ever. A dog is for life, not just for Christmas. Spoken like a true dog rescuer. I imagine this terrific twosome will be having a Christmas to remember. I am looking forward to Christmas with Hatchie. Loads of cuddles. Hatchie using his giant 
poor to open up his presents. Joe and I are about to surprise Owen and Hatchie to find out what Owen and his three-legged friend have been up to since the last time we saw them. Hello, Will. Hello. How are you? Oh, Merry Christmas. Hello. Hey, Owen. Hello. Hey, Hatchie. So when we first saw you, you know, you were young and Hatchie came into your life and it's, it's like you're growing up together and you're now this young man with so much confidence. Yeah. He's my soulmate. It's like, it's never ending. It's eternal. You come as a pair now. Mm, yes. So let's find out a bit more about you, Owen. What do you like getting up to these days? I like playing with Hatchie, tennis, wheelchair tennis on Friday afternoons. I really do like theme parks. They're really fun. Owen and Hatchie's story touched so many hearts when we first saw them, and they've been such a support to each other. We wanted to give these two friends a well-deserved gift. So this one's for Hatchie. It's a big bag oh. of toys and treats for him. Look, he's realised he's had the rustling in the packet. A bag full of treats. That'll keep him occupied for Christmas. Yes, yes, it will. Yeah. But Hatchie's not the only one we want to give something to you. We want to give something to you too, Owen. Thank you. No worries. Thank you so much. You and your family can go to about 32 amusements and attractions up and down the country. Free entry. Thank you. No worries. Honestly, thank you very much. Well, we both hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. You too. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. It's been a real honour to meet two such kind and deserving souls and bring a little bit of Christmas spirit with us just for them. Earlier, Vet Michael and I met Dalmatian Bo, in with suspected bladder stones. How long does it take for her to go to sleep? Um, usually about a minute or two. After an inconclusive ultrasound, we're heading to X-ray to investigate further. We're going in the X-ray room. What we actually need to do now is empty her bladder, so get all of that urine out. Mm -hmm. He really needed a wee. Yeah. And then once her blood is empty, we inject the contrast. Mm -hmm. So this is a clear bottle of fluid, but when you take an X-ray of this, it shows up as bright white. But that's why if there are any stones or any masses in the bladder, it will show an outline of those right. masses. Now we're just injecting that contrast into the bladder. Great, so that's in place. OK. If you can just grab her back end, I'm going to slide this under. One, two, three. Brilliant. Get out before I get turned into Dr. Bruce Banner. Okay, if you can grab those lights. There's a lot of talk going on. If I only had the stuff. What do you need to put Right, okay, um, so what we'll do, I just need to get the details put into that. Are you okay to hold this for a second? Right. Be careful, because there's some pee on there. <laughs> Pop it in there, and I'll just push it in. Okay, ready. If this is a picture of me, I've done it wrong. <laughs> and there's our x-ray. So you can see this is the catheter coming through here. Mm -hmm. That's filling the bladder. And then we can see this is the contrast pooling in the middle of the bladder. You can't see any stones pooling in the middle of the contrast, which is great. But it's not all positive news for Bo. So it's not really conclusive here. So you can see how this contrast goes around, but then suddenly it it diverts that way and then goes back round again. Right. Because if it doesn't fill this space, then we might think that there's a, a mass there. or something there, exactly. So what's our next step then for Bo? So what do you so think? So the next do? step for Bo, what we're gonna do is take that contrast out, flush in more air, do a final x-ray. Because if this is something, it's gonna be something bad and we definitely don't want that for her. Mm -hmm. So we wanna be 100 percent sure. That's 
So we've got the contrast out, and then we're just going to inject some air back into there. Try and fill the bladder like a balloon, basically, so we can get a really good image. One, two, three. Up. With an empty bladder full of air, the result of this X-ray should be the most conclusive yet. Right. Fingers crossed. There we go. So hopefully this is the one. Gives us what we need to know. So it's slightly in increasing tension with each X-ray. Yep. There's no irregularities in the wall. So that is really good news for Bo. We don't have to worry about any masses or stones in her bladder. So no big operations? No, we've got the, the all clear now. So the next thing is just making sure we can find a nice home for Bo before yeah. Christmas. Yeah. What we'll do now is we'll, we'll send away that urine for a, for a test, mm -hmm. see if there is bacterial infection but she will also go on a, a special diet to help prevent any crystals forming in her urine. Both problems seem to be typical of her breed, but with a good diet, they can be managed. But Michael, thank you so much for sharing me all that and for allowing me to be in the way. You did a great job. I mean, if you, ever, me. if you ever need to come volunteer, I mean, we can use your help. So. It's very, it's very <laughs> kind. OK. <laughs> thank you. Merry Christmas. Have a nice Christmas. <laughs> Bye. Well, that is quite a relief. I was getting a little bit anxious that I would be a surgical assistant for the evening, but it's fine. I'm going to wash my hands. Coming up... All these kiosks just for you. We'll catch up with Hardy back home from his icy dip and find out if Molly the matted shih tzu is out of the tangled woods. So uh, effectively, her legs have been so fixed for so long, she needs to learn to walk again. trying to stroke her, but I wanted to actually feel it. Molly the Shih Tzu has already been through a three-hour ordeal, having her terribly matted coat removed. Incredible. But underneath that fur, what other problems were lurking? I'm worried that it's been going on that long. Is the dog even going to be able to walk? After a sleepless night, worrying about his four-legged friend, Inspector Anthony joins his first visit now mat-free Molly to see how she's doing. Morning. What a difference a day makes. Barely recognisable from yesterday. That is incredible, though, isn't it? Go on. Go on. Stripping 12-year-old Molly of her monstrous mats unfortunately uncovered another problem, a severely deformed paw. So, uh, effectively, her legs have been so fixed for so long, she needs to learn to walk again and, and get the movement back in the yeah. legs, and the, the muscles won't be used to no. moving at all. Hello, that's a bit speedy. Take it easy. But with the right treatment and care, she should lead a happy life. All that's left to do of Molly's makeover is to take a nice warm bath. Oh, is that nice? Before Anthony can take her to the animal centre, where she will continue to recover and rehabilitate. Don't forget behind the ears, guys. Oh, let's get you in here. You're probably going to feel the cold with all that. Fur, two kilos of fur removed. Keep it nice and warm. With a new coat and a new owner at the top of her Christmas list. Small as a bug in a rug. Will Miracle Molly get what she wished for? After a chilly start for Inspector Jackie Miller and hapless hound Hardy, the day is drawing to a close in Northumberland. Before she finishes her shift, Jackie is on her way to pay one last visit. Hello! To the lovable Labrador. Hello, Sula! She's now safely back at home, though to Louise. Oh, that's better. You look warmer now, aren't you? Hmm? So nice. I was actually seeing a patient today and I heard my phone text and I just ignored it because I'm a, working in the community and it wasn't until lunchtime. I thought, oh, my phone made a noise early. I'll have a look. And it was Pat, the, the lady who was walking hardy today. Can you ring me as soon as possible, please? And when I phoned, I couldn't believe what she was telling us. Uh, give all a fright. 
you could at least feel a bit guilty, Hardy. You are an otter. You're an otter in dog form. That big paddle on the end. Hmm? A big paddle. Someone's certainly enjoying the attention. So our hero, isn't she? She's our hero. Mm. New friend. Paul's got new pal. Ah, oh. new pal. All these kills just for you. Remarkably, Hardy's ordeal mm -hmm. doesn't seem yes. to have left him with any lasting damage. Perhaps it's just not walking by the river anymore, but go <laughs> to the beach. Yeah. It's your daily dose of the sea, I think that's kept you alive, matey. I think so. Hmm? Because you're used to it. Yes. But, you know, if you were a cat, you probably would have lost one life today. It would have been a horrible Christmas, wouldn't it, if he wasn't here? It would have been a horrible Christmas, but it's the best Christmas ever now, eh, so now? Job, Thank you very much. You know what? If we can do it, then we'll do it. Thanks, Jackie. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, it's safe to say that this happy hound is very grateful to be spending another Christmas by the fire. It's lovely Back at Putney Animal Hospital, I'm pleased to report that Bo the Dalmatian has woken up and is doing well. And I've got a surprise visitor. Earlier, we met Molly, a Shih Tzu with a coat so matted it was putting her life at risk. Well, I'm happy to announce, in a mini Christmas miracle, I've been joined by none other than Molly and her new owner. How are you? We're both good, thank yeah, you. Good. And here you are, look, there's your face. <laughs> Hello, Molly. So, Shelby, is Molly part of the family now? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, she's my baby. How did you meet yeah. him? Um, I actually lost my own two dogs oh, um, it, in a matter of seven months. So the house was really empty, and I just thought I'd go to Wirral Animal Sanctuary. I went into reception and sat on the floor, and she come you come over, lit me on the nose, and I thought, you're coming home with me. So Molly was the first dog you saw? Yes. Yeah, it was just that one look. Love at first sight. <laughs> and she has a few little problems, doesn't she? I know her paws aren't quite what they were meant to be, are they? I know that this one bends in, so we're not allowed to pave walk at the moment. Right. It's just only on grass. We have our little walk of a morning, uh -huh. and then we go in here. She goes in there. When she gets tired, she, she loves being in here. She does. She, she just brings me so much happiness and joy. She really does. Oh, well, it's so lovely that you've found one another. And Molly, you've got a lovely home. And I wish you a happy Christmas. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank nice you. To meet you. And you too. Well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the show as much as me and Molly here. It's been a truly inspiring day seeing the hard work and dedication of the vets and nurses here in South London. All that's left to do is to wish you and all our four-legged friends a very happy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>